So welcome back to the sawmill friends. Today's video was sponsored by our friends at Ufi. And what is Ufi? It's a uh, wireless security camera we're gonna be putting up down at the wood shop today because I had some trespassers just a few weeks ago. I don't like that. Hopefully this will take care of that problem in the future. You guys hang in there. thing we need to do to install this camera is get Mr. Cotto go down to the log yard and grab a 12 foot cedar maybe a 10 footer no 12 footer I need to put three foot in the ground bring it up here to the sawmill and mill up a six by six and then we gotta dig a hole and after we get our hole done we'll mount the camera and see how it works I would rather have the grapple on Mr. Cotto, but I think I'll leave the pallet forts on here because after we saw up the cedar, I need to take it down to the wood shop and do some uh, planing to it before we dig our hole. And I've also got to put the auger on this anyways. And I'm not sure when you guys will watch this video. Today is April the 8th and we're supposed to have an eclipse here in about three hours. I got my glasses ready, but there's a pretty good overcast today. I'm not sure if we'll see that or not. We'll find out here in a few hours though. These are all way too long, but that's okay, we'll just trim it down to size a little. I need a nice straight one. Looks like a good one right there. It's way uh, longer than I need. Here I need about 11 foot and this one is 18 and a half. Definitely have to trim some off, but that's okay. We'll use the uh, piece we take off for raised beds over Mr. Cotto. I'm not sure what I said earlier on the length, but I think I'm going to do an 11 footer and put three foot of it in the ground and that will leave us with eight foot above ground, which should be tall enough for a security camera. I think it'll be tall enough. What do you guys think? It don't need to be real high, I don't think. But if I don't like it, I'll just come down here and make another one. No big deal. friends that right there looks like a good one i don't see any rot down here on the small end it's nice and straight should get a really nice six by six out of this log we'll make our cut right there that will leave us with a short one but i'll get some four by fours out of this one for the raised beds so nothing goes to waste i should have brought my chainsaw down here with me i left it up here in the shop so way it goes you always forget something. All right, guys, look over the garage. It's a mess because of these little girls in here. And man, they are growing. There's the chainsaw and a little disclaimer, this thing needs sharpened. This will not be my best cut right here, guys. Look over me. Now, as far as the trespassers, that was a couple of weeks ago. I had two guys down here in front of the kiln looking around and they were looking behind the kiln as well. And they said they lived a few streets over and they were on foot looking for their dog. Now that may be the truth, I don't know, but I don't assume anybody's telling me the truth anymore, to be honest with you. So now we're going to take some precautions to keep an eye on things if I'm up here at the sawmill and I can't see what's going on down here. Because the wood shop is about 100 yards from the mill. I can't be everywhere all the time, unfortunately. Well, it cut through that cedar pretty good, but it's not as sharp as I want it to be. The log looks really good, guys. Good color, 
limited sapwood. We'll talk about that later why I want limited sapwood on this log. And I don't see any rot right there in the heart. friends i'm coming had to pour me a cup of coffee here red cedar some of you guys call it juniper it really doesn't matter this is just over 11 feet long and the diameter i forgot to check it let me tell you guys real fast 13 inches i need a post out of this to be five and three quarter by five and three quarter my finished dimension will be five and a half by five and a half nominal because I got one of these little, uh, I think it's made out of copper, uh, commercial tops to put on top of the post. And they only make those in nominal sizes, so that's why we're gonna do five and a half. And the reason we're gonna do five and three quarters is because once we rough saw this, we'll take it down to the wood shop and I'm gonna plane it down with a brand new tool you guys have never seen. After we get that done, we will go ahead and dig our hole, put this in the ground, mount the camera to it, and we should be done. I've also got to put some clear coat over it. I got some uh, stuff I got out of Florida that's supposed to make cedar keep its color year round, even with UV rays hitting it. So hopefully that works out good for us today. But it is raining just a little right now, which is going to ruin the eclipse for people today wanting to see that. But it may hold off maybe here in about an hour or so long enough so we could put that coating over top of this. Now, the reason I was wanting this cedar log to have limited sapwood is because the red heartwood in cedar is extremely rot resistant. The sapwood is not. Since this will be going in the ground about three feet, I wanted all red wood if I can and no sapwood so we don't have any rot issues later on down the road. But based on my soil conditions and this being red cedar, a post like this should last at least 15 years in the ground without starting to rot at the bottom. It could last longer than that. All right, friends, got that one finished up and that looks really good right there. No voids, a nice solid cedar sits by sits or 
five and three quarter. There's no rot or nothing like that going on. And I got every bit of the sapwood off of it, except for this corner right here. And that's no big deal. The uh, planer will clean that up here in just a minute. I also did some quality control to make sure we got a nice square post. And we do right there. So everything looks good. Now we'll take this down to the wood shop as soon as it stops raining and get out our new planer and clean this up and then drill a hole. Well, unfortunately, we're not gonna see that eclipse today. It's way too cloudy and it's supposed to be raining for the next hour. That's a bummer because my wife and my son got some of those glasses to wear. We actually got a lens for this camera so I could film it, but that gonna happen today. All right, guys, I think we're ready to dig. This is my auger made by uh, Homestead Implements. I bought this a couple of years ago. Now this is made for a tractor. It's not made for a track loader, but since this machine is not high flow, and as long as I take it easy, I think we'll be okay using it with this machine. Need about three feet. And we are nowhere near three feet. I'm about at two foot. You go one more foot deeper. All right, friends, so I was gonna show you guys a new tool today to plane this down because I wasn't sure if I had this dimension just right for this cap, but actually I got it just right. It's a really snug fit. And with a little bit of uh, wood glue on the sides, that should hold on there for a long time. I thought I was gonna be a little too big with the post right here, but when you buy these caps, I got this one at Lowe's, you can never go by the size that the label says. It's usually off just a little. That's why I saw this oversized a little bit, but we got lucky, guys. It fits on there just fine. But I did say I would show you guys a new tool today. So let's take a look in the shop real fast and we'll get back out here. All right, guys, look over the mess here in the wood shop. Right there is the new tool. A lot of you guys probably know what you're looking at. That's a Makita 12 inch handheld power planer. I bought that last December and we will be using that a lot on some upcoming builds here on the farm this year. All right, friends, now we're gonna put a clear coat sealer over this post. And this is made by Wood RX. This is not sponsored by Wood RX. I bought this with my own money. A lot of guys use this stuff and they say if you reapply it every two to three years, it will make your cedar always keep that nice color and the UV rays won't affect it. So I'll report back here in about six months and see how it's doing. should be enough and I know what you guys are thinking why didn't you use a, a roller to put this on I don't have one I got a bunch of these little cheap brushes from the dollar store and I couldn't find a roller anywhere so I use what I got so we'll let this dry for about a half hour before we put it in the ground and while it's drying let me show you guys the camera we'll be putting on this all right friends real fast let me touch on a few features of this camera 
UFI Solar Plus technology reaches 25% conversion efficiency, needing just 2,500 LUTs to charge to 75%, less than usual of the 10,000 LUTs. Despite partial obstruction, it maintains 60% charging capacity, demonstrating the effectiveness in generating solar power even with 50% obstruction. All right, guys, I think I'm ready to go ahead and put this post in the ground. The camera will go right here on this bracket. It's charging right now in the shop. It's just about done. Then right here on the other side, we got the solar panel. This will keep the battery charged. So Ufi recommends that you charge up the camera to a full charge before you install it on your post. And I think it's just about done. And we'll go ahead now and stand this post up while it's finishing up. And something else to mention, I'm going to run this camera off my Wi-Fi using the app, but it also comes with a SIM card that I installed. So if you want to do like a, a Verizon or AT&T plan, because you don't have Wi-Fi wherever you need your uh, camera at, you can do that and pay a monthly service. All that information is in the box and the manual with this camera. But since we have Wi-Fi down here at the shop, I'm just going to use that. Man, this thing's heavy. All right, guys, we're ready to set this post. I'm not using concrete, I'm using Fast2K. This is not sponsored by them. I buy this at Lowe's and it works really good. I've been using it here at the farm probably since I moved here several years ago. All right, guys, I think we're done here. I'm getting a good signal on my phone. The AI motion detection is following me right here. So that's good. i tell you what, guys, this is a sponsored video, but I'll go ahead and tell you, this is a nice camera. All right, guys, so right there's the camera. And as I move around, as you can see, the camera will follow you. Good deal. This is a very nice camera, guys. My goodness. If you're interested in this camera, all the information is down in the video description. All right, friends. Right here is how you monitor the camera on the Wi-Fi through the Eufy app. So we got the app pulled up right there. And I'm at my house right now, which is about 100 yards away from the timber frame. So this is how you monitor your camera when you're not at home. You bring the camera up on the app. You hit the play button. And you get a real-time screen right there of what's going on with your camera. You can also get in here and make your adjustments as far as the AI tracking, check the battery life, etc., etc. You can also move this around. It doesn't stay in its fixed position. Now, this is really good, friends, because if I'm at the grocery store or if I'm out of town, anywhere I have internet signal with my phone, I can get on the app and monitor what's going on at my house when I'm not here. All right, friends, I think I'm done for the day. I want to thank Yuffie for sponsoring today's video. I really appreciate it. And if you're interested in that camera, they're having a spring sale right now. All that information is in the video description with links over to their website. All I can say is, guys, this is a sponsored video, but that is a really nice camera. And knowing what I know now, I would have probably went ahead and just bought the camera a few months ago and had security down here. So when I had those trespassers a few weeks ago, I would have saw them coming. But that's a really nice camera, friends. If you want security at your home and you have Wi-Fi, that's a really good system because you don't have to do any kind of network plan or nothing like that. But if you're off grid or you don't have Wi-Fi, you can always do that SIMS card like I talked about earlier. So thanks for watching, friends. I really appreciate it. I gotta get outside and get ready because we got four days of rain coming up starting tomorrow. So I need to take some walnut up to the sawmill so we got something to work on for the next few days. So thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. 
I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.